My name is Joshua Seifer, and I'm honored and privileged to serve as the pastoral intern here at Christ Down Methodist Church. And I'd like to welcome all of you to this morning's recorded worship service. Here at Christ United Methodist Church, we believe that everyone is created in the image of God. Regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, economic status, we believe that God loves us just the way we are, and everyone is created in the image of God. I'm Kim Garrison. I am the program director here at Christ United. And if you would like to support our ministries, you can do so by either going to our website and going to the push pay button, or you can certainly send a check to our address on your screen. And I just want to take a moment to say this will be our last Sunday with Josh Seifert. He's been our pastoral intern for how long now? Three years. Now, three, I guess. Years, three years. Three years. And this will be the last time to record and to have services with you. And I think I can speak for everybody that we will miss you so much. But I know there will come a time in the future when we can all say, we remember Josh when. So we wish you the best of luck, you and Claire as well. And um, we hope nothing but the best for you. Thank you very much. Yep. Lastly, I'd like to share a brief moment about the recent Bible study that I will be starting on July 13th on Zoom. This class is going to go over issues and topics of interpretation within the United Methodist Church on a global stage. We're going to be talking about issues of human sexuality on a conference level as well as the United Methodist Church as a whole. And we're going to go through biblical scriptures and the Book of Discipline seeing how interpretation has shaped our understanding of the topic and how humanistic factors like politics and finances have influenced the decision and why it's dragged on for now three, four, five decades. So if you would be interested in joining this class with me, once again, it starts on July 13th at, on Zoom at 7 p.m. If you'd like to join this class, my email will be on the screen right now. Feel free to shoot me an email stating your name and that you are interested in the class, and I will be able to reply to you and get you enlisted in the class. Now, as we are done with announcements, I ask that we all center ourselves, our hearts and minds together, whether we are recording or in person, allow us to come together as one faith community to center in ourselves in Jesus Christ and worship God.
Will you please join with me as one voice for our call to worship this morning? Gracious God, who blesses us with gifts, let us give thanks. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We as disciples receive many gifts and talents from God. We give thanks for our gifts, which allow us to better care, serve, and love others. Almighty God, allow us to recognize these blessings and gifts. Remind us of your cry, calling your disciples into action to serve others, seek God, do justice, and act inclusively. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. Here it reads, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who wants to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When you grow up, you are going to be either a pastor or a politician. These were the words I frequently heard while I was growing up as a young boy in the church. My own mother would joke with me that I would be an excellent politician because of all the hot air that was coming out of my head. From a young age, I was very comfortable being in front of crowds, since I played in the praise band every single week. Older women in the congregation and my adopted grandmothers, my surrogate grandmothers, as my family calls it, would always come up to me after church and compliment me on how well I played in the band. However, I would probably guess my playing was nothing more than bangs and slaps on on an electric drum set. However, It doesn't matter how well or poor I played, the church instilled in me a sense of talent and contribution. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Corinthians, within the setting of the town of Corinth. As we understand it, this book of the Bible, like many others, were illustrated by Paul during his travels around the Mediterranean. Each town he visited had a different culture, social expectations, aspirations, and problems. As we can guess from our scripture passage, Corinthians could not agree and decide how gifts and talents 
are placed on a scale of significance. Scholars have noted certain char characteristics associated with some of the verses within our passages this morning. On verse 6, scholars recognize the emphasis on the part when it says, the same God who activates all, stating, God gets the credit for all the gifts, so no one can boast over others. Throughout the passage, literary scholars have noticed the significance of the bracketing within each pair of gifts and talents, which creates a sense of completion and balance within the scripture. Paul goes as far as to mention the talents of utterance of wisdom and the utterance of knowledge. Knowing Corinthian culture valued speaking philosophically and the speaking of tongues. Paul constructed this passage with the intent to bring the community together through their gifts and talents. By validating all gifts, Paul was able to create a sense of balance which thanked God for their abilities. This way the church in Corinth could stop fighting amongst themselves and collectively put their gifts towards helping the community. This passage holds an incredible amount of vision for churches in the modern age. Now, while Christ United does not have a problem of infighting and debating on whose gifts and talents are better, we can still use this passage as a reminder of how our church should operate. Our church is a venue for those who wish to serve in the community, and we should know our ways of serving the public stretch far beyond the four walls of this sanctuary. If you pull up the church's website, you'll begin to see a broad variety of ministries this community of faith offers to the surrounding areas. Sections are dedicated to specific areas within this church's ministries. The Connection Point page informs you on many different volunteering opportunities, including Open Shelf, Career Closet, and the Getting Ahead classes that Pastor Beth offers. The Care Ministry page provides individuals with an outlet to voice their concerns with others and seek closure. The website even includes a page on spiritual practices with helpful tips on how to improve our connection with God in our sense of discipleship. As we, as we can see, this church has a wide variety of ways to serve and utilize our talents. But we should recall to today's scripture and emphasize the importance of the verse there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. Today we place too much stress on ourselves, believing we have to be the best in something to truly make a difference. This mindset does not speak to the power of God and their ability to give us the blessings of gifts. You do not have to be a professional vocalist to sing in the choir with Director Colt. You do not have to be an expert planner in order to help at Connection Point with Pastor Beth. You don't have to be a full-time student somewhere to take one of my Bible studies. You don't even have to be a member of this church to take communion with us on Sunday morning. Gone are the days that we remain inactive because of our doubt and inabilities and our abilities and our gifts to serve others. This church prides itself on being good disciples of Jesus Christ, and yet we let our lack of faith get in that way. Since this is Claire and I's last Sunday, I want to make this moment a call to action for this community of faith. I've had the privilege to grow in and with this church the past several years, but I feel that we can do much, much more. This church can maintain and nurture the ministries here while growing together as a family. The past year of the pandemic has taken a toll on progress here, like many other churches. But as things slowly become normal again, we have to begin to make progress. All it takes is the feeling, the call, perhaps the courage, to take the first step into a ministry that helps others within this community. If you have ever thought of joining a ministry or volunteering for a group and talked yourself out of it because of a personal doubt, remember who was asked to follow Jesus in his ministries. When Jesus asked a group of men to drop what they were doing and follow him, 
they weren't prized scholars. They weren't lawyers. They weren't high-ranking officials. They were fishermen tending to their nets. Completely ordinary men. It doesn't matter if others have gifts or talents that seem to be praised more than others. It's okay if you feel nervous or unsure about joining something or a new area of ministry. It is fine if you feel that you are ordinary or don't have any gifts or talents to give. You can brave forward into an area of ministry or volunteering, knowing that God has given all of us gifts and talents to complement each other's. It is up to us to explore and discover what we can provide for his discipleship. You can continue in your growth of ministry and discipleship, knowing that being completely ordinary is what gives us the strength to share the joy of Christian discipleship. Amen. I'm Richard Randolph, Senior Pastor here at Christ United Methodist. At this time, I invite you to join with me in an attitude of prayer and reverence. O oh God of infinite possibilities, you have been generous to us in so many ways, and we are grateful for all that you have given to us. We give thanks for vaccines and the decline of the coronavirus. But, O oh Lord, there are many followers who are suspicious of these vaccines and suspicious of the science behind them. We ask that you move within their minds to help all of us see that science is not something to be suspicious of, nor is science an impediment to Christian faith. Instead, help all of Christians in this country to see science as a wonderful gift from you to humanity, a gift that we can use to improve our lives, a gift that is part of your many other gifts in the natural world. O oh, Creator God, we also give thanks for all of the diverse, diversity in the world. We give thanks for diversity of species in nature. We also give thanks for the rich diversity among different people. We are grateful for the diversity of talents and skills for ministry, whether it is helping to manage the church finances, to singing in the choir, to volunteering for child, to provide child care, or volunteering to go on a mission trip. We give thanks. Oh, generous God, we ask that you show us how we can use our talents 
and our skills to be in ministry through the church or through vo volunteering in our community. Finally, O oh God, we lift up all of those among us who are struggling with illnesses, especially those fighting cancer or going through rehab. Further, we lift up all of those in our midst who struggle with loneliness and depression and solitariness. And we pray for the family of Ray Plusak as they grieve his passing. We lift up his wife, Barbara, his children and grandchildren, as well as all of his friends. Please give us hope and healing at this time. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Receive this benediction. I can say from the bottom of my heart that the past several years for Claire and I have been amazing. We found a community of faith that not only accepted us, but accepts a large demographic of people that have yet to be accepted on a wide level. For us, that was incredibly important. Christ United Methodist Church provided us outlets to share our talents and gifts within the community. And I can personally say that the past three years have been an immense learning opportunity that I will continue to hold throughout my ministries in the future. Remember that regardless of our gifts or our talents, we can find a way to utilize them within the local church. Whether it's through music, youth, outreach ministries, food shelters, there is not a reason not to employ our gifts and talents into the community. And remember, whenever you have a feeling of doubt or thinking that you're not good enough, to join a certain area of ministry or volunteer. Remember that Jesus Christ called 12 ordinary men to follow him and join the first discipleship that paved the way for us today. Go forward knowing that our talents and our gifts are good enough, and they are part of the discipleship, and we can use them all to share the love and joy of Christian discipleship. Amen.